Our next step with the Nike problem is to actually do some analysis with this data, which we'll do here in video 5 for activity 2. We're going to do a break-even analysis. With a break-even analysis, we're trying to find the point where profit is zero. Profit is calculated as revenue minus cost. We've seen that in a couple of examples already. We just might have called it something different, like net income. In this case, I'm going to call it profit. So break-even is where profit equals zero. Or another way of saying that is break-even is the number of units we can produce so that we don't lose money. But we also won't make money at that point. This is also the point, or number of units, where revenue and costs are equal. So we can set up a formula to solve for the number of units we should manufacture and sell in order to break even in two ways. We could use a formula where revenue equals costs, or we could use a formula where revenue minus costs equals zero. Either way is the same thing. Algebraically, it's just moving costs over to the other side of the equal sign, so you can see that formula here. Either formula works, so whatever you're comfortable with you can use. I'm going to use the second formula most often. It's just how I think about break-even. So for me, break-even is just where profit equals zero. And then I'll use this formula to actually solve for the number of units I need to break even. The first step in calculating break-even is to input our revenue and cost formula into this break-even formula. So I'm going to put a formula here for revenue and a formula here for costs. It's just the formulas that we've been using up to this point in these problems. So for Nike, revenue was 25Q and cost was 10Q plus 500. So I'm going to take revenue minus, put that in parentheses, all of the costs, and that should equal zero. Next, I'm going to use algebra to solve for Q. If you already see how to solve for Q, go ahead and pause this video and do it yourself. Your check figure is 33.33 units, or rounded to 34 units for break even. If you are able to solve for that number successfully, you can move on and don't need to watch the rest of this video. If algebra is more of a distant memory for you, then hang out with me for this video and I will walk you through calculating break even. So going on, our next step is to distribute the negative to the 10Q and the 500. So since the negative comes before the parentheses, I'm going to distribute that negative to both of these numbers. It's going to look like this. Then I want to add 500 to both sides of the equation. I'm going to add 500 here and 500 here so that I isolate my variables on one side along with their associated coefficients and my constant, or a number without a variable, on the other side of the formula. It should look like this, so adding 500 to both sides, and then I get just the coefficients and the variables, and over here I have the constant, or in this case, remember the y-intercept. Since the variable associated with the 25 and the 10 are the same, they're both q, they're both the same number, then I can combine those two by subtracting 10 from 25, and I get 15q equals 500. To solve for q, I just need to divide each side by 15. That would leave q on the left side, because the two 15s offset each other. And I get q equals 33.33, which I round to 34. So again, that's just 500 divided by 15. I round to 34 because I cannot make 33.33 units. I can't make a partial unit. So 33 would not quite get me to break even. So I would need to sell 34 units to break even. In the next video, we are going to do one more manual calculation to answer the question about how many units we need to manufacture and sell to realize a 15% profit margin. So it's very similar to this question, but we're looking at a 15% profit margin which, remember, mar profit margin is a percentage instead of a dollar amount. And it's not break even. It's not 0% profit margin. We're actually looking for an amount there. So we'll move on to that next video.